Hi YouTube, how are you? Welcome to the channel. In today's guide we'll be looking back at the ZX Spectrum, my first home computer and a real classic, certainly a device that really kick-started home gaming in the 80s and for many of us the start of a lifelong passion. So the Spectrum itself was released in 1982. Although it came in two variants, the 48k variant was by far the most popular and most powerful. Relatively cheap compared to its competitors, it really took off in the UK, although it had limited success overseas. There were certainly some Eastern European clones, and it was produced under license in the States. But ultimately, it stayed very much a, very much a British film, the plucky underdog against those foreign imports. Looking back today, it really is a classic in terms of design. Compared to the beige monstrosity that was the Commodore 64, it has some really sleek lines, although perhaps not in terms of graphics. Spectrum stayed around for most of the 80s, continued to get releases up to the early 90s, but ultimately its heyday was up to 1986, with Sir Clive selling Spectrum to Amstrad for £5 million. The ultimate result of a madcap scheme to develop electric vehicles. No good will ever come of that. Anyway, let's have a look at some emulation. So first up you'll need some games. Now I can't tell you where to find them, I'm sure a Google search might help you out. In this folder I have three different variants of files, TZX and TAP files which are tape files, and Z80 files which I believe are disk files, and they load slightly differently into our emulator. Our emulator of choice today is Retro Virtual Machine. Developed in Spain by Juan Carlos Gonzalez, this really is an excellent piece of software. Not only does it emulate Spectrum, also Amstrad and MSX I believe, although of course we'll concentrate on Spectrum today. So I've put a link to the website in the description below. So let's go over there and download it, and then get emulating some games. So I've placed the downloaded file onto my desktop, and they're going to extract it using 7-zip, and then we'll open it up and get the emulator started. Now the first thing we'll have to do is create a machine. Now we'll do that by clicking on the left hand corner. Go create a machine. We'll choose ZX Spectrum, because that's what we're trying to emulate. We'll then choose ZX Spectrum 48K. And we'll choose Spectrum 48K. And we'll just save that down as ZX Spectrum 48K because what else would you call it? Okay, so first of all, turn on your machine. Lovely touch, really love that. A few buttons up top here, we'll get to in a minute. Here's how you change all your screen settings. So you've got all your CRT variants here, change your color settings, change your screen shape, scan lines, all of that. Really lots to play around with here if you're looking for a real sort of traditional look. Um, alternatively, just leave it flat and get on with it. Um, but, but really quite sophisticated and a really good thing about the simulator is the ability to really tune it how you want. We can also play around with the audio a bit. Quite a nice look around here. Set up some different volume levels and some filter passes to get some interference. And here's where you, learn, here's where you load your peripheries. So if you have a a mouse you wanted to put in this where you do it. But this is my favourite touch. Let's get up our tape deck. Look at that. Proper 1980s retro. So how do we load it again? We press eject of course. Select our tape deck. Select our tape from our file. Of course we'll start with Manic Miner because what else would you start with? Load that into our tape deck. Now to load again we must press J. Control PP. So we press J because J was a load key on the spectrum. Just had to pause there and let you listen to that. Wonderful. The sound of a loading spectrum game. Now you can load games differently. If you have the Z80 files we spoke about earlier, you can just select them from your file folder and drag them onto the screen here, which is fine. But the truth of the matter is, if you're going to go to the trouble of emulating the Spectrum, let's do it properly. Let's sit here, load a game, and enjoy watching that tape deck roll, without the fear of the bloody thing hanging like it used to in the 80s. However, if you do get a little bored of this, 
That little fast forward button we showed you earlier on. Let's press that and it will walk us through to the end of the game right now. And here we are, Manic Miter. Manic Miter. Manic Miner, my goodness. This is my first ever game on a ZX Spectrum. I played it to death. It used to infuriate me. In... Um, no. I can't even say it. So frustrating. So a quick run through and see where we can go. Not very far, I imagine. Let's have a look. Now Manic Miner had 20 levels. If I'm honest, I didn't routinely get beyond 5 or 6. And without a cheat code, I think it was almost impossible to complete. Oh, still got it? No. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, let's try again. The first three keys on this level were always the easiest to get. And you could get the fourth and the fifth, but if you could try to do it at pace, I always made some sort of mistake. Now, in terms of gameplay, you can, of course, use an Xbox One controller or even a PlayStation 3 controller which is connected by Bluetooth or connects automatically to the emulator. However, because of the spectrum, I think you've got to use the keyboard. So it's P and O for left and right, and the spacebar for jump. But I think certainly for your first few goes of any game on spectrum, you must use the keyboard. Oh no, too ambitious there. Okay, one last life, see how far we can get. So I'm just going to move for another three or four games that I think are real, real classics of its time. Games that I really loved playing when I was a kid. Just to give you an idea of what you might want to revisit if you want to get the spectrum up and running. I think the game, the game folder I've got has got around 1500 games in it and it's around 98 megs so you can get tons of games for this quite easily. Um, whether you want to play them all, probably not. It's always good to be judicious in your title selection. There's a lot of trash on the spectrum. A number of different TV tie-ins and cinema tie-ins are... Oh god, the boot of death. There you go. Just loads of them. Anyway, let's move on to some other games now. So here we have Beachhead, US Gold. Classic wartime shooter. Now in terms of gameplay, I, I was going to say the emulator is a bit laggy, but I don't think the emulator is laggy. I think the emulator is really accurate. My recollection now of the Spectrum is it was really laggy. And you really had to be sort of half a second ahead of where you wanted to be to try and get something shot down or, or to move in time. It really wasn't responsive, not like you what the feel we have in games today. But once you adjust to it, it's quite quite simple to, to get a hang of, I suppose. Um, part of its charm. Emin Hughes International Soccer. Certainly my favourite football game for the Spectrum. Now of course I'm showing you the only clip under which I scored, and it's a screamer to boot. But you know, what else am I going to do? I'm hardly going to show you, show you me completely screwing up. There we go. Logged in for 35 yards. You're lucky there's not a replay button. So moving on to our next game then. We'll have a quick look at Horace Goes Skiing. Now I'd forgotten all about Horace's attempts to get his skis in the first place. I think it took me 15 attempts to get across the road there and back before I actually got to ski. The other thing about this game is who thought this shape was the ideal character for a kid's game? Scary, really terrifying. It looks like the mask from a horror movie. Scream, that's the film I'm looking for. <laughs> I knew it would come to me. Yes, it looks like the mask from Scream. Now I have to admit, much as it's been fun emulating the spectrum, and it's worth doing from time to time, I'm sure, the novelty soon wears off. Once you've played any of these games for more than five or ten minutes, you do tend to get a bit frustrated, and if I'm honest, a little bit bored. But I think it's a real nostalgia trip, and if you've got a couple of mates around and you want to recollect the old days, or just show your kids what you used to play, or if you are a kid, you want to experience the stuff I had to put with when I was your age, which, compared to the PlayStation 4 or PC gaming, is horrific. 
Anyway, here we are. Final game I've got for you here is Alien Syndrome. Another game I absolutely loved. To have a sort of a screen scrolling game back in the early 80s was a real novelty. It almost felt like you were playing Gauntlet at home. I do remember having lots of fun with this particular game. Um, a real classic of its, of its time. So as we conclude the gameplay, I think I'll just sort of say that it's been really successful. In terms of the emulator, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I love those little classic touches with a tape deck. It seems really accurate, the graphics are accurate, it sounds really good. Um, the fact you can use a gamepad or the keyboard, it's quite a simple setup, I think it's fantastic as well. Um, really worth checking out. Well done to the developers, I mean really fantastic. That's, that's sort of and show them some love, download it, give it a go. There are alternatives, I mean you can use Fuse either through RetroArch Retro Arch, or in its standalone version. And there is another, another emulator I believe called Spectaculator, but I think that's paid after the first 30 days trials, which is why I opted for this particular version. Anyway, I've had a great time doing this, hope it's been useful. If you have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below. Let me know what you think. I'm going to try and make this a weekly series, so I'll think about what to do next. And if you've got any suggestions, let me know. Until next time, go well.